All right, so right off the bat, I'm getting some OBS issues, so that's fun. And I have to remember to unmute. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hola. Hola. My sound is also really high. Ugh, there, I've risen from the dead. She has risen. <laughs> Cadence, I thought you were like petting a cat at first before I realized that was your phone. <laughs> Just like, yes. That's how she unlocks her phone. Just like, you know. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm already getting, uh, getting OBS issues, which is very <laughs> unusual. Yeah. It's doing almost 50% dropped frames. So what you're saying is it's a Thursday. Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yes, that. It's a, one of those tea days. It's a normal I Tuesday. A, normal Tuesday I wish it was a for Thursday. us. I mean, it could be a Thursday, too. Let's see. Let's see if I can do some bouncing around here. Try and... Cause it, it, it's also really weird because when I close my task manager and open it back up, it'll say that it's taking up like 90% of the CPU, and then as soon as the task manager comes on, it's like, oh shit, stop what you're doing, and it drops down to like 20%. Jeez. Yeah, so it's like, maybe I'll just leave it up <laughs> so that it doesn't start eating up a lot of unnecessary CPU. Oh no, I'm yeah. being watched. I'm being monitored. Let me stop doing whatever that is. But, uh... Now it's now it's sitting at a cool twenty percent, which is where I want it to be. Yeah. But the moment the moment I take my eyes yeah. off of it, it'll it'll start hiccuping. All right. So I'm gonna get the Twitter notifications out. Nope, that was the wrong button. Did I close that other screen? I did close that other screen. Oh, there's a funny picture. It's a Velociraptor in skinny jeans. Thank you. I needed that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we needed it. But... I don't know why we needed it, but I definitely needed it. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. That was what they wore in Jurassic Park, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they called them blue. Because of the blue jeans. <laughs> Lay back down, please. Lay somewhere. Please. Please go lay down somewhere. What? Lay down right here where Fuck. you need me to not be? <laughs> I don't care if he lays down in front of me as long as he doesn't stand up in front of me. I have to have my camera <laughs> about a foot higher. Yeah. Okay. All right. Where did our vampire Twitter notification go? Chance, I just realized. Which? Your character's first name Ooh. is one of Talison's. I'm drooling and snoring and sleeping. Okay. Yep. She did that on. <laughs> she did that on purpose. Yeah. Because guess who her sire is? Is it Talison? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. Where's my VTM poster? Right here for some reason. Alright. There's that. Alrighty, so, uh, some of you who are here may notice that our overlay is a little different. Oh, also, I need to adjust Shay's camera now that she's here. Position yourself where you're going to be. Don't look at me. Thank you. Don't look at me. I see you. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. I see you. I can see you on the camera. Mm. All right. Uh, some of you may notice that the overlay is a little different. Uh, our our dear sweet uh, Nosferatu had to bow out. Uh, due to health issues, um, we wish them well, and hopefully, 
my drop frames will also get better because they are still going over 50% even though I've turned a bunch of shit off. Uh, that's not good. Um, so bear with us. Technical issues down a player. Uh, K is taking a mental health day and they promise it will be the last one for them. And so hopefully we'll have a full coterie going forward. So with the three of us, we'll... We can still continue the investigation, or we can take uh, a little more personal looks on each of you, because, you know, it's a vampire. They're not going anywhere. Vampire! He doesn't have any legs. It's not like he can walk away from y'all too far. Right? Right. Um, so, so Antonio is fabulous enough to fill the extra two slots, I'm pretty sure. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm gonna... Uh, Reese, just keep riffing for a second. I'm gonna turn you down just a little bit. <laughs> Am I loud? You're loud on my end, which is weird, because you're only at 100%. I'm always loud, so it's fine. Yeah. because I talk too much. That's okay. I think that's if good. I w if I ever went to Japan, everybody would just shush me all the time. Shh, so loud. Oh, that See? was racist. Sorry. Wow. I apologize. <laughs> so loud. Stop it. But now, like, I've been called yeah. loud. Like, I just, that's the way I speak for some reason. I just am always loud. Mm, maybe 85. I speak from my diaphragm. There you go. That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Uh, so, uh, how is everybody doing? It's been a while. It's been so, so long. I am doing well. Shay, do you want to tell them great news? Which great news? The great news is going to be happening in the next week. The great news that's happening in the next week? Mm hmm. You mean that great news? Yeah, that great news. That great news. She's stalling. I am. Okay. Our house is closing on Friday. On See, Friday. I called it. <laughs> you did. You did. Um. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome. So Friday we close in the house, and Thursday we're going to um, uh, do a walkthrough, make sure that they didn't steal the doorknobs, uh, and uh, hopefully by the end of this month we'll be all settled into a new place. Yay! When we moved in, they took pretty much everything but the doorknobs. It was ridiculous. Like, we walked in, they took down, like, every possible, like, shelf, um, the sconces, like, everything they could possibly take, they took. It was, like, insane. Wow. And see, I wouldn't hold it past these people, considering how, like, the kind of, uh, they had, like, a bankruptcy sale on it, so we're getting it for, like, half of what it's worth, which is a great steal for this house. Not only that, like, it's a great time to have a house and or property right now with the way inflation's going to go up in the next few years. So, like, you want debt right now. Yeah. Like, you want Oh, debt. I have plenty. I got, I, yeah, it's like, I got plenty of that. Don't worry. I mean, like, debt is an asset. In the yeah. It's a thing. So, like, you want to have things that you can then sell later on after the inflation caps. So, I'm just, it's good. It's very good that you got something. So I'm very happy for you guys. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this property because what we're paying for it versus what its quoted value is is there's a huge gap. It's almost twice as much. So uh, once we start adding uh, stuff to it and making the value go up, it's going to be a great flip uh, mm -hmm. down the road. And yeah, um, Cadence, how'd your interview go? Well, I'm just in the waiting mode right now. Federal jobs is going <laughs> to do that, and you're going to be waiting for a little while, and then you'll yep. have forgotten about it, and then one day it'll be like, hey, are you interested in this still? And it's like, yes, yes, I am. I'm told it's like four to, is it like four months of waiting? It can take, it can take up to six months. Up to six months, yeah. <laughs> It'll take a while. Well, that's, a, that's about how long it took my brother. They did say they're trying to get it all done within the within the month, so. Oh. I would assume that since the way jobs are going right now, they probably want to get people back as quick as possible, so they probably will hire quicker than they normally would. Yeah, well, they're going to start ramping it up because it was a hiring dead zone for the yep. last year. Believe me, I know. <laughs> My uh, friend works at the courthouse, 
So they were like on a hiring freeze for like years and years and years, and now they're finally hiring people again. So it's good. Get him while you can. Get him while the getting's hot. Whatever they say. <laughs> Take well. two. They're small. <laughs> <laughs> they are travel size for your convenience. All right. Well, anyways, uh, that was enough time for me to stall and get the notifications out. So we will begin. Um, I'll do the recap since it's been a while. Basically, uh, you all had used the help of our dear, delightful Olivia. I remember names. Our dear, delightful Olivia had taken you all to where uh, the suspected, uh, not the suspected, but the former lair of the deceased kindred uh, was located on the canal of uh, just off of Sun City, uh, a coincidental uh, hiding spot for a Nosferatu in Arizona to take a place named Sun City. Um, but their lair had been situated uh, deep within the uh, Phoenix Labyrinth, um, a secret set of tunnels that only can be navigated by the Nosferatu. Uh, any non-Nosferatu who has ever attempted to navigate the labyrinth without a Nosferatu has never been seen again or died horrible deaths, which is why Olivia insisted that you all stayed uh, very close to them and uh, followed their exact steps and not to deviate from the path. Uh, that was me saying the trail and path at the same time, <laughs> deviating from the path. Um, once you all arrived, uh, you were given the view of a lair that was situated um, deep underground, but they had also uh, had patched over uh, windows and other things uh, to keep sunlight from getting in and air from filtering through. Um, and this lair had been infiltrated by vermin. And uh, through the infiltration and uh, subterfuge of the vermin, uh, the windows had been sabotaged of their sunproofing and the coffin that the Nosferatu had made uh, their safe space had been left open uh, for them to be uh, given final death via sunlight uh, when the next day had arisen. Uh, you all had done a quick investigation of the area and you had found that this Nosferatu had connections to South America, which uh, had been pinging up fairly recently in your own searches uh, for things that had been going on around the city. Uh, so far, two separate incidents have linked back to Venezuela. Venezuela? Not Brazil. Venezuela. Brazil. Thank you. That other South American the place. place. Yeah, the big one. <laughs> Venezuela's on top of Brazil, so it's been a while, remember? Uh, Brazil. <laughs> Normally, Kay recites all of the wonderful note-taking, so I'm doing this off of memory. Um, You're doing better than I ever could. I'll <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to jam-pack all of this in at once. Um, Antonio has been getting cozy uh, with Callista's <laughs> sire. Um, he has a piece of the pie, as it were, uh, within the operations of uh, the nightclub, the uh, Half Moon House. Um, Callista has been maintaining relative uh, autonomy while Antonio has been keeping their sire distracted, uh, also taking away some of her attention. Um, and Lucian definitely got away with murder. I think I've... Uh, oh, also there... They're pretty uh, cozy right now with uh, Maxwell. So that's also important to note. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we will find ourselves uh, back at Orpheum. I'll save you guys the trouble of trying to navigate out of uh, the labyrinth again since Olivia is now uh, relegated to a helpful but in the background NPC. Uh, so she is able to show you guys the way out uh, in which I was just going to dive through the window dramatically. I mean, it, you could. Shh. You could just <laughs> climb your way up, yeah. But I feel like that's the sensible approach. It is, it is quite sensible. 
Mm. Through the window. Mm. So everything seems to be pointing us to South America, but I am not quite ready to take a trip. <laughs> not quite there yet. Um, well, I, I do have an idea. Um, if you think it's a good idea, um, then I have an idea. If, if not, then ignore me. Um, I could start looking at, um, I don't know, uh, places around the city, like I'm looking for, for property, or you could, uh, and anywhere that is showing uh, that um, exterminators might need to be go, going by a, a bit more frequently, maybe there's a pattern we can find that uh, would allow us to follow uh, an increased trail of rats. First thing. I like the idea. That's, that's, I'm afraid that's really all I've got to offer. I, I don't, I, I don't know how to work with Czech or, um, or talk to animals, so. So I could try to get into like some bookings, but I am definitely no uh, live. So give me a second. I'll pull up uh, my computer that Olivia probably wiped again. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Bless you. I couldn't mute that in time. Sorry. <laughs> now you're good. Um. Uh, so, Rin, I'm going to do a tech intelligence and mm -hmm. try to uh, dig around in some... Oh, Jesus, hello. Mm -hmm. um, Just in time. <laughs> Just in time. Small the child werewolf alert. arrives. <laughs> yeah. Antonio is incapacitated by the tiny werewolf. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to search around to various different uh, pest control places and mm -hmm. see if there's, like see if I can kind of triangulate if there's been an increase, number one, if so, in what area of Phoenix. Yes. Okay, so you're looking you're looking for uh, large amounts of vermin congregating within the Phoenix area. Correct. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hack into a lot of different pest control agencies' databases, Absolutely. pull all that data into um, a, a separate database together, and then once I have all the data, I can just set up um, a query that will, like, track the comings and goings. Okay, sure. Yeah, I like it. Two successes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you absolutely do that. And I think, uh, roll me, roll me two more, because Olivia would be helping with this. Uh, we'll just see if it adds any extra... So two more of the same roll? Yeah, just two more, two more D10. I'm oh, just going to say, just a bonus dice for Olivia helping set it up. Okay, so one more success. So one more. Cool. Um, so as, as that happens, uh, you and Olivia get to work on working on this, and you're seeing that there is actually uh, reports of more vermin showing up uh, in different areas. Uh, you're noticing a pattern, however, because a lot of the reports are coming from Sun City, Peoria, Glendale, Phoenix, and it's kind of springing up in that direction like there was movement. So, Sun City, Peoria, Glendale, Phoenix. So it's and, moving straight down towards us, so that's great. Yeah, it looks like it looks like very recently there's been a mass migration of vermin moving from Sun City back into Phoenix proper. So I will share my findings with the group. Um, that is really really close to us. Did someone say that they can talk to animals uh, the last time? 
Viper can talk to animals, and so can <laughs> Olivia. Of uh, course. <laughs> Viper uh, uh, Viper's like dissecting a rat or something, I think. Viper did go back to... Viper went back to the uh, the San Diego Zoo. Pfft, San Diego. God bless it today. Brain. Uh, the Phoenix Zoo, uh, where their <laughs> haven and work is. So they have gone They have gone back to do some research of their own. So barring any suggestion, any other suggestions, my thought is we should set up uh, some rat traps around Phoenix, um, install microchips so that we can track these things, and then let them get summoned and then figure out where they're congregating next. Mm. Any thoughts? Um, I think I like dealing with pe people that are smart. I just go outside and try to find them, so... That's just me. Well, um, <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of fun when we do find them. Um, I I think that's a, a good idea, Antonio. Um, when we find them, Lucy and I will both have a good time. I'm sure. I um, am probably just like staring at the at the at the map they have pulled up. If they're heading in this direction, do you think they're... Do you think they'll keep heading towards... down to Guadalupe? It is possible, or but maybe... depending on what they're actually aiming for, they could be coming here. The problem is that they are certainly massing more vermin than they're coming. So it seems like when they started in Peoria, they're pulling the vermin from there. And by Phoenix, I'm sure they built up a huge amount um, that's only going to get bigger. So depending on what their target is, I mean, we should more than likely let Bernice know as well. They're trying to walk to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're getting the rats to carry them to Brazil. <laughs> it is a dramatic escape there. They're hoping to do it. Sort of that direction. Ish. Uh, so Rin, <laughs> is Bernice actually here tonight, or no? Um, yeah, uh, Bernice would be here today, tonight, today night. Um, yeah, so she is. She's actually working at the Half Moon House. You guys are at Orpheum. Mm -hmm. Um, so you. If she's not at Orpheum, I'll just give her a call. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, she she's not necessarily uh at Orpheum, but she is available to reach out to her tonight. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would uh, reach out to her probably on, like, the club's phone. Okay. Since I don't have a dedicated line, this way she knows who's calling. So yep. I'll let the group know, like, I'll be right back. I'm going to let her know just so that we can start locking the business down just in case. Okay. Yep. And so, uh, once again, wonderful reminder of our Toriador sire, Bernice Vachandra. Uh You call her on the direct line, and she answers the phone, and she says... Well, this is only one of two people. Whom do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Good evening, beautiful. It is me. Antonio. Good evening. We are tracking some uh, kindred killers. Um, they are using vermin, such as rats. Um, they have been slowly moving towards our territory near Scottsdale. So I just wanted to let you know that we should uh, probably increase security around the Half Moon House. Vermin. How disgusting. Indeed. We're not currently sure who the perpetrator is, uh, but as soon as I have any info, I will let you know. I just wanted to make sure you never knew who the target is, so I figured sooner rather than later would be a good time to inform you. Yes, of course. Always good to be careful. Thank you, Antonio. Of course. Well, I Calista. will get back to it. We do have a plan to track them, so I will let you know how that goes. Of course. How is Callista doing? Oh, she's doing quite well this evening. Is she available? Uh, of course. One moment. Um, and he'll put the phone down and uh, go over and get Callista. She's right behind um, you. Ah. <laughs> she's probably, like, like over his shoulder. <laughs> So I'll hand close to the phone. Uh, for me. Uh, yes. Hello? 
Good evening, Callista. Um, it's good to hear you, Matt. How are you this evening? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm doing my best to, to help the coterie. That's wonderful to hear. Keep an eye on Antonio. Make sure he doesn't get into any trouble. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. And stay safe, darling. Absolutely. Very good. I look forward to hearing from you. I'll, I'll uh, let you know as soon as I have any new information. Yes. Be well. Stay safe. Tell Lucy and I said hi. I will. And she hangs up. Uh, Calissa looks uh, remarkably happier um, before she hangs up the phone. Um, so I will uh, call my ghoul uh, and let him know to start gathering the uh, parts that we're going to need. Um, so the, the traps and the uh, GPS chips. Yes. And he will be able to acquire those for you. Uh, it, he says it won't take long. That should only take a couple hours. Um, just as a small aside, um, in addition to the chips, just in case they're going to jam it somehow or they go in an extra thick tunnel, um, I'm actually going to uh, the bait that for the rats to go into the trap. I'm going to have it slightly irradiated so we can find them with the radiation of DP. Okay. Uh, that might require a roll then. So why don't... Do you want to roll it or do you want your ghoul to roll it? Um, probably my ghoul would have better stats for it. Okay. Um, but just so you know, it's just basically finding things like old clock. Like, old paint has um, radium in it. There's actually a lot of... I'm not going to get myself on a watch list. No, no, no. no it's Google, it, but there's, there's definitely things that you can find that are radiated. You're going you're gonna to do some uh, do-it-yourself uh, irradiated. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> okay. Before, That's a little bit easier then. Before he gets to work, uh, Calissa just like grabs his arm and says, thank you. And then looks to Lucian and says, uh, Madame Bassandra says hello. Oh. She knows my name. <laughs> <laughs> She does. It's scary, isn't it? <laughs> so, we'll say manipulation and streetwise, because he's got to be jury rigging this. Uh, and Antonio, do you need any, any help? Oh, look at him go. All right. Yeah, he says that's going to be no problem for you, Antonio. And sorry, Shay, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's all right. Uh, Antonio says, uh, my ghoul should have everything uh, in hand. He's very good at this kind of thing. Okay. It's going to be kind of, uh, how do they say, hurry up and wait. Once we get everything set up, we're just going to play the waiting game, and then hopefully tomorrow night we will have uh, a significant en enough of amount of them where we can release them and track them. How do you hurry with waiting? <laughs> So once we find them, we're going to track them back to the source, hopefully. Oh, okay. Because whoever this person is, they are drawing the vermin to them, presumably, because they are starting in Peoria and then slowly moving the entire, I don't know, what do you call a multitude of rats? Um, Annoying. <laughs> what is it? Annoying. There you go. Uh, they are slowly moving the whole gnawing, um, and most likely acquiring the rats as they go. I I see what you did there, and that was funny. <laughs> like I know there's words for everything, I just don't know the actual term for rats. No, no, I I like that that they said you you call it annoying, and you said the mass of annoying. <laughs> it's just um, a group of rats is. It's oh. called a mischief. Oh, I it's like called that. a mischief. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I dig that. That is almost as good as a group of ravens being called a murder. Yep. Almost. <laughs> oh. And that meme of the two ravens that says attempted murder is the best meme. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, so you're keeping an eye out for a mischief of rats. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, that's so good. Oh, now I have the episode title, too. It's going to be Mischief Managed. <laughs> Unless we get eaten by them. Yep. Don't sue us, Rolling. I'm stealing it. <laughs> All right. Be like Indiana Jones, rats. Why did it have to be rats? <laughs> it have to be rats. Um, during during the couple hours that it's going to take your side or your ghoul. Uh, strike that, reverse it, your ghoul um, to track this all down uh, is there anything else you guys want to do? If we're just going to wait um, Calissa is going to start putting together uh, some ideas, she probably um, she's just going to carry around a book and start writing notes for a uh, a um, play she wants to develop. That um, you want to develop working on the play. Yep, working on the play. Mm -hmm. yep. she's got a she's got an idea uh, for for gaining a little bit of influence. Um, but she's also going to try and stick close to. Uh, Antonio when he'll let her. So Antonio would definitely check on the kid at some point. Um, but other than that, it's just basically a waiting game. Oh, um... Oh, my God. <laughs> he's, uh... He should be upstairs right now. When you... That is good. Mm -hmm. Um, when you head upstairs to check on him, um, Calista has been good about making sure that this uh, young boy is taken care of. He has his own room space, um, and it does have an overlook of the club itself uh, through a window, but his area is in the back and secluded. Um, having been thin-blooded himself uh, in order for the alchemy and stuff to work, and uh, was he thin-blooded or did, no? No, he, he's. He, uh, you're I mean, going to ghoul him. Uh, I can't ghoul him yet. You're going to ghoul I'm him. Going not to, yet. I can actually ghoul him if I if I get the, the thingy. Okay, so he's just a he's still he's still just a human uh, currently. So he has a he has a bed, um, and he has like a TV, and he's currently playing. Um, he's playing some Smash Bros on the latest. Uh, console for, you know, this alternate World of Darkness universe. He's playing the Nintendo V. I don't know. Um, I'm hip with what the kids are into now. Um, Nintendo Switch. Yeah, the Switch. Switch. It's a Switch. The Nintendo Twitch. Um, so he's, he, he's keeping himself busy. Um, Callista's kind of not restricted him from going out too far, but considering the kid is quote unquote dead, uh, he can't go to school or do anything like that. So a lot of the time is spent here helping or just kind of playing games, living living the dream of a young teenage kid uh, who thinks they don't have to go to school ever again. Trapped in a room. Uh, to which I immediately <laughs> turn around and ask Callista, like, is he being homeschooled? I, um, I'm not super smart on, uh, a lot of subjects. I can, I mean, I, I've been trying to teach him, um, things here and there. Um, do you have somebody? Well, I mean, we could all teach him something, I'm sure. But he should probably have some kind of dedicated teacher. It will be important for later that he is, uh, educated. He's, um... I, I, I mean, I, I do have a, a lot of books, but I don't know how, I don't have school books. Um, you're right. Um, do you know someone who 
I don't know anybody particularly, but we could probably look someone up. Okay. Just so that we could, uh... If he is going to integrate in our, into our society eventually, he will need to learn much, and not just of our society. Yeah, um, I, I did, um... Uh, the I, more I skills I... that he has to offer, the better, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, um, y you were right. Um, I had him, um, I, I had him connected to me as a retainer for the time being. I've been trying to um, advance my alchemy to um, make him healthier, but I'm not. Um, my blood's not strong enough yet. I, I'm close, very close. That's very good. Uh, the only thing I would say is generally ghouling someone prevents their growth, yes? Um, it slows down their aging, but it doesn't stop it. Okay. Um, I believe LA by Night defined it as like you, you're aging like for every decade, you're aging like a year instead. So it's, it's significantly slowed. Right. I just don't want him to be like a 40-year-old in a kid's body because that would suck. Well, <laughs> yeah. So so it is it is kind of that. And the flip side to it, too, is as soon as they stop getting fed, it all right. catches up to them, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How old is he again? I think we said like 14. Oh, that's actually older than I thought, so that's at least a little. Better. I think he, I think he was like thirteen six months ago. Yeah, I think, like he, I think he was, he was. <laughs> he had a birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he would be, he would be a little closer to fourteen now with time progressing. Yeah. But he was, he was in the early tweens when we set it up. So yeah, Antonio would definitely look into getting him like a. Uh, like a homeschool dedicated teacher kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, specifically dealing with like STEM fields because that's generally what's the most important to kindred society, I guess you could say. So we'll give him an emphasis in STEM. Alright, now just for my own knowledge, I'm looking up what STEM fields is. Uh, ah, science, gotcha. technology, um... science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Uh, now I know what that uh, acronym means, and I will commit it to knowledge. Yeah, so giving them the, the important stuff. Yes. Uh, biochemistry it... <laughs> or biophysics, environmental sciences, hydrology, geoscience, or medicine, computer science, industrial design, information technology. Wow, that is a really well-rounded education system. Mm -hmm. Aerospace and engineering. Again, it's, it's, oh, history's great and all, but like, it's not going to really help the kid, right? So I'd rather focus on things that could benefit him in our world, you know? Well, if, if he, he's going to make history, himself... We, he'll be able to, you know, interact more with more of our kind, because, you know... He'll... he'll I, all, I think it's... All, all, I think it's he'll he'll pick up on the history and etiquette over time. Right. Like just interacting with people. Okay. I gotcha. Cuz he does need to have the knowledge knowledge. So that's mm -hmm. good. Um and yeah, I think the history side you guys can teach him too. So Right. You fresh mooks who just uh became sired your or kindred yourselves. Boy, my brain is just all jumbled today for words. Okay. Words hard. Words hard. Uh, I'm just getting all my terminology backwards today. Uh, anyways. I understand. It's all right. It's uh, all good. I want to find out if Cal if I if Callista knows that the aging process slows that significantly. Do I roll? Uh, I roll roll me in. Etiquette plus intelligence. So good at this. Yep. You're only a, you're only a thin blood. Why would you not know this? Um. 
You know... Uh, do you want to re-roll? Uh, sure. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, did you want to re-roll anymore? You, you, you can re-roll as much as you have uh, willpower. Nah. Okay. Um, so, you're a thin blood, and the information that is given to you is already fairly limited because mm. of uh, how they view thin bloods. So, you, as an individual who is still figuring out your own weird place within kindred society, being very different, um, you already don't have a huge grasp on what things like ghouling will do. You have certainly heard rumors, and you know Antonio has a ghoul, and you probably could have asked Antonio's ghoul, but he's off running errands. You probably could have asked Antonio, too. Um, but just thinking on it, you have heard rumors about it, but you have no idea what ghouling somebody as a thin blood will do. Um... So, um, I, uh, I, I realized that I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't ghoul anyone, um, with as thin as my, uh, Vita is right now, but, um, I mean, I've been working on it, um, and I, I figured it would be, I, I figured it would be safer for him in our society if he was? I mean, safer, yes. Um, but he would be considered property of property. <laughs> uh. It is a... It is really hard to say which way he would be safer, to be honest with you. Um, is anyone really safe? I would think a ghoul would, might be safer than thin blood, the way some people view thin blood. So, uh, if a ghoul is a ghoul of, like, a powerful vampire, then you're that powerful vampire's property, and nobody will mess with you as a result of that, right? But if you're a ghoul of a thin blood, who's already on the bottom chain of the ladder. I mean, that's the thing, though. I, I've seen ghouls treated with, with, with much better... Um... Um, Antonio and Lucian, you would also know that as property, um, property is usually the first thing taken away in punishments as well. So it might be something worth warning about. Yep, I would definitely bring that up too. I would let Callista know. Oh. So, I mean, you have nothing to worry about if, if you're on your best behavior and don't screw up. I mean, there are pros and cons to everything. I just want you to know what could potentially happen. It's better to go in eyes open then eyes closed. Um, so it, but if you that... like, maybe you could enter in a, into a deal with somebody and just say that they're that person is cool. Well, that is a possibility. Well, you mean why I like going there myself? Correct. Unless you actually want this other person to pull them. Oh, um, okay. I mean, I, I guess Granted, I... that person would be taking responsibility as well, so if that person messes up, then something could happen to the boy then. So it must be somebody you trust. Right. Um, then I guess... Uh, I mean... I need to make a willpower now. Uh -huh.
two successes. What are you trying to resist? Um, I think I. What she what she says about uh, like what she thinks is is good for her sire. Um, I would be sort of giving him my sire's BK, but, I mean, she's, what, what do you think, Antonio, Lucian? I would not attach him to someone as prominent as your sire. Um, if someone was to attack her, they could attack him as collateral damage. Um, oh. Perhaps someone slightly smaller that's not quite as involved, um, like, but still potentially powerful. Uh, you mean like, like, like you? Sorry, I didn't mean that. No, certainly not me. I get into far too much trouble to have uh, uh, a boy under me. Uh, I was thinking per perhaps someone like uh, a Lucian, a Viper, uh, maybe a Maxwell. Um, who do you have good relationships with that might be able to do this for you? not built in a day. Why don't you think one? Yeah, we gotta wait until he grows a little more anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what do you mean? Yes, you, you do not want to start it now because uh, it slows the growth, so it will take him a while to fully mature. Oh. Oh. Um, Ren, I actually think um, to embrace before they're of age is actually a, like a legal in kindred society, right? Because like baby it is. have a tendency to go insane. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is uh, frowned upon in this uh, establishment. Yeah, it is, it is highly <laughs> it is highly frowned upon within kindred society to uh, sire somebody before they're considered an adult um, for the reason stated that they tend to. Uh, it, it, it's the interview with a vampire problem. Right. They mm -hmm. psychologically they get damaged, and the being stuck in a child body when you are two hundred years old causes mm -hmm. a lot of issues uh, on your own self image like and on your mentality. And it's just a, a whole thing that they've seen happen, and they're like, "Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and put a stop to that." And and yep. Uh, there are special circumstances where it is okay to do it, but it is very few and far between. I'm sure certain people could get away with it, but it's certainly not a common thing. Yep. Um, and and that is that is restricted to just um, embracing. Um, yes. So, you can ghoul whoever you want, but yep. I'm just saying, like, that would slow everything down. So if the intent was to embrace this person eventually, then... Mm -hmm. You would want them to, you know, get to that point first, and exactly. then worry about basically. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, I don't know if he would want to be embraced. Well, I mean, that is very sweet of you, but I don't know his it's his choice either. <laughs> I I just want to make sure that he. Fits in. Right now, he's a human that knows of our society. Yeah, he's a retainer. Yes, he is a retainer, but he's a liability as well. Oh. They don't allow humans to stay humans very long after they know about our society. 
they will give him the four years to mature, but either he becomes a ghoul after that, or you will need to hide him somewhere. Oh, um... I I don't think a lot of uh, other Kindreds really like me, though. Uh, I, I, um... The, the Herald, I think, does. Who's the Herald? Is that Maxwell? No. Um, she met the Herald uh, on a trip to the uh, Ivory Tower. Um, let me. Uh, I haven't met this person yet. Yeah, you haven't met this person. This was another uh, Toreador. Um, I found their name. Their name is... Do, do, do. Harold. Uh, Victor Riddle. I have not met this person, but I would not bring it up lightly. Um, uh, you should her... definitely have a very deep connection to this person before you bring it up. Again, the child has time. He's 14 right now. Uh, but they, they are, they're also very uh, uh, up there on the ladder, so to speak. They are. That is true. Maybe start your uh, budding relationship now so that when it is time, you can go to them. Um, I did have, uh, I did have an, uh, an idea, um, actually. Um, so I, I'm going to be putting together um, a performance. And um, of course, uh, of course you and my sire would be there, but I was also thinking of inviting uh, people like Victor Riddle so that maybe um, Maybe he, everybody can, you know, make connections. I think that is quite a good idea, in fact. Do you think? Do you think my my? Uh, do you think Madame Bashanas would be proud of me? I think so. I think you coming out of your shell and gaining more power for her house is a good thing. Okay. I, I I haven't um, completed it, but I have I have some some notes and, and things, and I'll keep working on it. I should have it done in a couple months. Excellent. Well, it is a very good. Th Do we know what uh, plan this riddle is from? Toriador. Oh, then the play is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure that will go over quite well. So, you have some options to think about. Um, a, a thought, though. Is it you mentioned, yes. you mentioned it, it could be a problem if 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 he's if he's cooled by a, a thin blood, but um, I, I've seen ghouls treated much much better than thin bloods, like much much better. Thin bloods certainly have a stigma to them, as far as things like vampire uh, prophecy. Uh, you are considered some kind of boogity man bad omen. Um, the but as far as the ghouls end go, times. right? <laughs> as far as <laughs> ghouls go, generally they are treated better because they are basically like retainers of kindred society. Um, they are the tools that get things done during the day for us kindred. So yes, they are treated better. But generally, they are only as powerful and protected as the person that ghouled them. So, as a ghoul, if somebody, to, if someone was to find out that the person who owned the ghoul was a thin blood, theoretically, there would be no real consequence to destroying the ghoul. Is what I'm saying. You wouldn't have to worry so much unless it came up or someone found out. 
but in that instance it could pose a problem. And and you don't think um, you don't think my sire would would be a good choice to to oh. I think your sire is very scary. The word interesting the word in the scary. business and not she doesn't she doesn't need more problems. You mean? Correct. It's it's another variable that she would have to account for that I don't think she wants. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, you took charge of this child on your own. I think she would want you to take care of it on your own. And on that note, Antonio will beat him at Smash Brothers. <laughs> and eat his Lunchables. Ha! Ah, take that, kid. Is there anything uh, Lucina wants to get up to? Oh, gosh. Um, he wants to check his haven and make sure rats aren't getting into it. Mm. <laughs> since it's sort of in a basement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and just remind us what uh, what his uh, haven looks like. It's in the basement of like an abandoned meat packing building. It smells good. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like bacon. It smells like bacon. <laughs> Yes, but it, it is now canonically a bacon factory. <laughs> if they don't ha if they don't have a bacon factory, there is one now. There you go. Um, so, you give me a uh, wits awareness. Oh goodness! Damn. Hey, a one. Uh, would you like to spend any willpower? I think so. I can find my shade again. Willpower. Okay. Oh, look at that. There you go. <laughs> uh, it would only be two of the dice, but ah. uh, it's still two more successes, which brings it up to three regardless. Um, let me open up the book because I have a response in mind. I just want to make sure it's appropriate for a Malkavian. <laughs> Uh, people who have played Balkavians more than I have, which is uh, I've played all of Zero. Um, I just want to make sure that if I start having voices show up in your head, it's technically appropriate. Yeah. But there is the Malknet, so you're yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, ha that hadn't gone away, right? That's still a thing? Nope, still a thing. Alright, Ruby Mad Hatter, thank you for the host. Um... Right. So, uh, Lucian, you start looking around uh, your haven underneath the bacon factory, and um, what you end up seeing are signs of vermin. Whether or not the vermin had been there beforehand or not, you're, you're starting to make notice of little things, uh, scritches here, uh, droppings there, and uh, the voices are whispering to you that it's like, oh shit, have these always been here? When was the last time anyone cleaned this place up? The bacon does smell good, though. Oh man, do bacon draw in rats? What if the rats are here right now? And as you're looking around, um, you see that over in one corner of your haven, uh, there is a series of uh, rodent pellets that have formed the words, 
just because you're paranoid doesn't mean we're not out to get you. God, they're intelligent rodents. Right, I, I I am going to have to get some traps. Maybe 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 I can ply them with food. I feed them. Like me. I'll get food and traps. <laughs> food and traps. The bacon. The bacon. Bacon. I'll get bacon, traps, and rat food. Yeah, okay. That's what I'll do. And another voice says, and poison. Oh, do I need poison though? That's just, that just seems rude. Another voice goes, what if we steal vipers vipers and release them into the haven? Oh, that'll be fun. They'll be Vipers happy. vipers! Ah. <laughs> Viper will never. Viper won't miss a dozen or two. Do Vipers notice they out of traps? Well, if I rig the traps so that... So that they release Vipers. Ooh, ooh. The rats go in and the Vipers go... Put the rat food in with the vipers, because the vipers will eat rat food. The vipers will eat the rats. So the rats go in, the vipers get lunch, but it's happy. Viper will thank you. You're feeding their snakes. Exactly. Yeah. Viper's busy. Just many things to worry about. Research. Reading. All that stuff. Alright, I'm gonna go steal vipers, vipers. Get some boxes, get some rat traps, get some rat food. Buy some bacon. <laughs> I love it when Kay gets back, I'm just gonna be like, and you notice that all your snakes are gone. It's <laughs> gonna say Viper's somewhere, like, doing whatever he's doing, it like sneezes like in an anime, you know? Yeah. Uh, all right, so, uh, Lucian uh, has now begun a daring infiltration of the Phoenix Zoo, um, and so you don't have anything. You don't have anything like uh, folklore being running water or anything like that, right? No. Nope. Okay. Cool. Because uh, it is situated. Uh, the way to get in it is over just like a little canal river. It's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, there's like a bridge that gets you over there. So yeah, if you happen to have that, then it's like the safest place of kindred could be or a human for that matter um but uh you know where uh viper's work area in haven is um while olivia is the one who's usually there uh, i believe you guys have gone to the zoo uh, at least once so it's not hard to get there and lucian would know to at least go for the reptile house uh because you know what are what are lizards but snakes with legs, after all? <laughs> uh, and so, um, please give me uh, a couple of rolls here because you're going to be breaking in at night. Uh, so I will need a uh, dexterity and stealth. Stealth a thing. Yes, stealth plus dexterity. And of course, if you're using any powers, just let me know. I don't. Stop using Antonio sheet and use vipers. I'm funny. Everything's funny. <laughs> How about oh. four successes? No, that's uh, five. Oh, five, yeah. I got two. Okay. Well, yeah. actually, it's uh, six successes because the critical makes it more. Uh, so you have six successes. I'm going to roll vipers privately. So that you know, well, actually, it doesn't matter. You have a really high number. I don't need to hide what they're getting here. Uh, so it's going to be wits awareness. See if you get by them. Modifiers. I actually give them a penalty because they're in research. 
They're focused. This is their thing. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, you are able to successfully break into the reptile house. Um, you are the wind. Uh, breaking into this reptile house, you see that there are several uh, atriums and uh, enclosures dedicated for these snakes of various sizes and uh, um, 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 species of snakes. Um, it wouldn't be hard to guess which ones eat vermin uh, because most of them do uh, whether they're constrictors or venomous, uh, you probably don't have an idea. But how does uh, how does Lucian go about rounding up these snakes? Um, brought along a cardboard box because oh. that's what you do. Um, I think he'd at least have enough presence of mind to maybe read any signage that would be around by the snakes. Hmm. See if any things say what they eat. Otherwise, he'll just pick the pretty ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so give me to keep the snakes, to keep the snakes from freaking out on you. <laughs> I'm gonna need a... Charisma Animal Kin. Oh gosh, I'm screwed. <laughs> all, all I all I really want is one success. Because there, and ah, there, there it is. All right, uh, yeah. So what what this amounts to is you're just you're able to carefully abscond with these snakes. You're you know you're not snake charming them or anything, but it's your ability to handle them into the box without them getting agitated. Um, so you just collect up, and I'm gonna roll a number here. Uh, pretty, pretty snakes. Yeah. <laughs> um, give, me, give me a relative uh, term between a handful to a buttload. Uh, how many snakes are you grabbing? Probably just a handful. Yeah. Just a handful? Not a lot. Alright, so I'm gonna do... Oh, I that's... don't want them eating each other in the box. Yeah. All right. So you 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 grab a you grab a couple handfuls. So all in all, you get about seven snakes. Uh, they're they're let's see here, going from tiny to uh, boa constrictor here. <laughs> you grab you grab seven big snakes. <laughs> you, you well, just eat more rats that way, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you grab you grab uh, four or seven large species snakes uh, and pile them into this box. And uh, Viper's definitely not going to notice that these large <laughs> snakes are missing. This is fantastic. I'll get them back before they find out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, and so uh, you you've rounded up these uh, these snakes and, and you head back to your uh, to your haven um, with with snake heist done. I think uh, since we're we started just a little late, this will be a good time to take our break. Um, so let's get up, take five, and come back, and we'll uh, probably go for. Our... We'll be back. Yeah, we'll go for we'll go for another hour so we don't push too far ahead. But we'll take a break, do another hour, and then we'll call it for this week. All right, all right. See you guys. You're back, shortly. everybody.
Alrighty. So, we'll be coming back here in just a moment. Still been losing all these frames. Doesn't seem like it's been causing any problems. Nobody said anything. I haven't noticed anything on the... On the uh, yeah, so far the bot's there. been good for me, too. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's been telling me it's been about 60% dropped frames, uh, and I'm getting several notifications of it. So I'm, just, I'm sure it's just a connection issue, because I'm watching the, the uh, bandwidth jump between 2 to 4K. So it's probably, it's ping-ponging in that stable range. So I don't, I don't quite know what it's doing. I don't have anything. EA background service. Why are you even there? I don't play anything with <laughs> EA. Why don't I kill that? Let's see if that I helps. The Sims. <laughs> like it would be fine if I actually played The Sims, but you know I don't have four hundred dollars to invest into DLC. <laughs> By the time you're done your house in The Sims, you could have bought a real house. Basically. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna un BRB us. Look at your beautiful faces. We're black. Alright, so <clears throat> um, the night has progressed. Lucian has successfully Pee Wee Hermaned several snakes from the zoo. <laughs> um, and uh, poor Viper is none the wiser. Oh, just in time. Near Dark Society I insist we now. play this oh, and use the Benny Hill music for it. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, and it, it, it was the heist of the century. Um, poor, poor Lucian is not going to notice these snakes are missing until next week, and that's going to be hilarious. Um, the intent, Lucian, is to just uh, let them loose here within the haven. Yeah. Okay. The scattered rat food around just cause. Mm -hmm. Yep. So with a scattering, <laughs> a scattering of rat food, bacon, and vipers, uh, you are quite content that your uh, haven will be safe until the uh, vipers start to overpopulate your haven. In which case, you will need to release gorillas to eat the snakes. <laughs> Um, I feel like this is not going in a great direction. <laughs> as, a, as a Simpsons reference. <laughs> then you have to ghoul the gorillas. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Ooh. It's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Some gorillas. <laughs> gorillas. Uh, yeah. I just imagine the, um, uh, uh, our, our target just like riding on his rafts and then they all just like train each director and he's like, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> also, like completely unrelated. I smell bacon. Completely unrelated, but because I left Twitter open, uh, apparently, if this is the real cover, the special edition for the new adventure looks really cool. Since it's a Feywild one, it's got like a, oh, it's it's yeah. a it's a white backdrop, and it's got like red coloring in it and some red flowers and then a displacer beast and then just the I'm title of it super it looks... super sad though because i was really hoping for a dragon lance module <laughs> i mean I've been waiting for it's, a dragon it's... module since fifth edition to release it Oops. was the most requested module at the time they put out a poll and <laughs> dragon lance won the freaking poll at the launch of fifth edition and there's if, still no dragon lance campaign set if, if, if we're TMI, getting more dragon lance books so. if tiamat keeps yes. dying and if tiamat keeps dying in all the uh uh in all these worlds she's not going to be able to enter any of them no. <laughs> yeah we uh, killed her at the bristol fair a couple summers ago so. <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> she got killed in the Dragonlance world too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did. And then she came back, and then she got killed again, like you do. <laughs> it's it's fine. It's fine. It's just Tiamat. Nothing of value was really lost. Uh, let's see here. All right, I actually, back on a track. player with like Tiamat's like full breath weapon. It was awesome. Mm hmm. Like, insta-killed them. It was amazing. <laughs> like, 
I, I wish I wish I could do one that has Tiamat in it, but uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat are hot garbage. So we'll never get to experience that nightmare again. I mean, I'll just run you a Dragonlance game. It's fine. There we go. Um, right. So uh, Antonio has offered to run Dungeons and Dragons for Callista and Lucian uh, because we have definitely been in character this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else? Uh, sending those sons of bitches, Wizards of the Coast, they still haven't released my Dragonlance module. <laughs> Dude, that was a big thunder clap. And I'm undead, <laughs> I have time. Can you hear that thunder? Yeah, and yeah it was it was pretty crazy here a while ago. We're actually supposed to get thunderstorms for like till like Saturday, they said. Yeah, we're booked up. We're booked up for the, the rest of the week too. Yep. I don't think my weather is. I just went to check the weather forecast, and one of the trending news things just says, Glacier Blood is our latest nightmare. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Besides that horrible... Glacier's uh, where the old gods are frozen. Yeah, it's just... Anyway. Anyway, so uh, putting that nightmare aside. Um, Lucian, was there anything else you wanted to get done tonight uh, on your own before reconvening? No, that was fun. That was fun. That'll do. All right. Um, <laughs> so I assume everybody will reconvene at Orpheum. Um, Antonio, this is when your ghoul comes back uh, a couple hours later. Uh, it's been yes. enough time for Lucian to get up into trouble. Um, and so uh, he has delivered uh, you several boxes uh, worth of equipment. Uh, he tells you they're in the back room. He doesn't take them through the front doors or anything. He's a professional. Well, cool. I thank him greatly and let everybody else know that we're good to go. Um, what's our next step, then? Now we uh, monitor the subjects, because, like, we're in the middle of the club, so I'm not like it. You know, uh, and uh, see where they lead us. Yeah, so we just keep an eye on the computers, and once they're on the move in a distinct direction together, we should have our uh, answer, hopefully. And I imagine now would be the time of putting stuff together and baiting some rats and unleashing them. Lord. Uh, so, let's get a roll from and Tonio to cobble all this together. What you want, boss? Uh, I believe... A cult intelligence. <laughs> A cult dexterity. Uh, it would be technology. And... You can give me... I keep wanting it to be manipulation, but then I remind myself that it's not that. <laughs> um, give me... Manipulate those rats. Yeah, manipulate those rats. You, you lie to them by saying that the cheese is, is fine. Um, give me an intelligence technology, and I will give you a bonus two dice because Olivia is helping again. That should offset it. Cool. Great. And then... Uh, two is enough. Two is enough because all you're all you're doing is assembling them, and you need them to work. Up, oh, no, that's been see. something. Uh, so six is a pass, I believe, right? I believe yeah. so. Yes, I believe yeah. it's six to ten. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, you are able to assemble these. Uh, they will not break uh, under uh, any rattly duress, um, and so. You assemble enough beacons to... Hmm, usually when you do want to do something like this, you want about 20 to 30, probably. So you have enough to start baiting uh, places for these rats to pick up. And, you know, this too is going to take some time. And I think you won't find anything for it tonight. Um, but you spend the rest of the night... Uh, driving around uh, Scottsdale and downtown Phoenix uh, just placing bait 
in places where you suspect that a lot of the vermin would be. Um, my question is, does Lucian snatch up any of this uh, bait? Probably. Just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, one or two pieces uh, will go missing. Usually it's just because Lucian had pocketed them. Uh, whether or not they ended up telling everybody else what happened uh, in their haven is up to Lucian. But I'm not now, super worried about, like, a few. Yeah. As long as we have enough to get the job done, I don't really care if Lucian grabs some. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh... Yeah, you spend, you spend the, the night doing that. Um, over the next couple days, you start cataloging and watching the movements of what's happening and uh, you start to notice that there is in fact a pattern of uh, these rats congregating in the Phoenix area um, and you know where it was just like little dot 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 little dot, little dot. Uh, over time they're basically starting to mass into an area right around here. And so they're just kind of slowly moving in from where you had scattered them, but uh, by like the end of the week, you have noticed that they've centralized um, in the downtown area. Excellent. So uh, I will head to Orpheum and kind of just let everybody know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so everybody's up to speed uh, with that. Um, it's a new night. Uh, it's uh, The club is moving. It's very exciting. Uh, there are plenty of wonderful, hungry people. Also, since I did a little time skip, I have to remember to keep our bookkeeping stuff up. Um, it's been a couple days. I would imagine everybody would have topped themselves off. So if your hunger's not at one, put it at one now, and then give me a rouse check for uh, this current night. James Cahey, thank you for subscribing. On YouTube, wow, hello, hi YouTube. Thank you for subscribing on YouTube, that's new. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys weren't aware, we are multi-screen streaming on uh, Facebook and YouTube as well. So seeing somebody from YouTube, hello. Uh, very happy to have you here. Um, Yay! Yeah. Um, so that's that's awesome. Hi. Thank you. Um, anyways, <clears throat> uh, I have rouse checks. Uh, Callista gets hungrier, Lucian gets hungrier, Antonio gets a critical, so they are so not hungry that they can exist forever. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but he doesn't get hungrier. Uh, that's that's the important bit. Of You have reconvened at Orpheum. You have realized that the rats are congregating uh, in southern downtown Phoenix really don't know what's going on with my brain today with words um you are in strike that restart you are in orpheum rats are in downtown phoenix uh antonio has conveyed the information lucian uh you've noticed that uh, a couple of the uh snakes are significantly fuller um but uh there there haven't been any signs of uh new vermin in in your haven uh, since you released uh, all of the rats. Do I still have seven snakes? You still have seven snakes, yes. Oh, okay. You have seven... You have seven... <laughs> mm, mm, now I should make a... <laughs> should I make you roll for it? Um, no, they don't know how to operate <laughs> stairs. They're fine. <laughs> they can open doors, apparently, though. I think it's going to be hysterical that, like, Viper's going to, like, try to feed them, like, next week and be like, none of them are hungry. I'm so confused. Where the fuck are my snakes? 
you're eating bacon. Yeah, no, Kay's... Kay's Why do they smell like bacon? Kay is going to be furious when she finds out, but <laughs> it's going to be hilarious at the same time. Um, um, if we know where they are, then I... I I'm, a, I'm a little bit peckish. I don't want to go in on an empty stomach. Would you like to hunt? If we have time, I'd like to um, uh, find something pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, where I, I do you you just kind of like goes like this at the club? <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna ask uh, where do you plan to go hunting? Uh, I'll just do it at the club. Okay, that's Never perfectly for a fine. Reason. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, please give me your uh, hunting roll, and then tell me how you want to do this. Uh, I'm going to slip into the crowd, dance for a little bit, and um, uh, see if I can attract someone and uh, take them back for a quickie, a quick nibble. A quickie and a quick nibble. Yep. All right, go ahead and make your, hunt, make your hunt roll for me, please. Uh, I have to remember how much extra dice I get for this. Yeah, what do I have? What do I have? So many modifiers. Yeah. Okay. Three. For this specific thing. Oh. Well... Um, I'm good at one thing, everyone. Uh, yeah. Um, so you were able to uh, lure in uh, a, a young, attractive person. Uh, gender is not important for Callista, uh, as far as I remember. Um, food is food. Um, but they are, they are attractive, they are a good dancer, and they are completely into you as you captivate them. Uh, upstairs to your private room where uh, you spend uh, at least an hour or so uh, with them before feeding and for them it's the best intoxicating feeling that they experience and they are more than content once you are done my question is do you slake your hunger completely or do you just get it back down to zero or back down to one excuse me you mean, do I eat them? No. Yes. <laughs> do you slake your hunger completely, or do you get it back down to one? Just to one. Okay. Yeah, so once it's once it's all said and done, um, they kind of stumble uh, down the stairs out of your uh, private uh, penthouse that's situated within Orpheum as well, um, and then kind of make their way back to the bar top themselves off with a drink, uh, looking a little lightheaded and, and quite satisfied uh, and before they fade off into the crowd again. Excellent. Are we all ready? I am uh, quite satisfied, yes. Did anybody else want to take the time to feed? I'm good. Good. I'm so not hungry, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you're so not hungry. And you're pretty good. You, 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 you had a juice box earlier with your blood bags. <laughs> uh, so you're... Juice box while I was playing Smash Brothers with the kid. Exactly. Alright. All right. Uh, um, so I guess plan? everybody will climb up into my uh, truck and we'll all go together. Uh, Unless still, anybody else had different plans. Do you still have that um, uh, Kevlar? I actually gave it to you. Like, there's an armory at the uh, the Haven anyway, but oh. I assumed everything that you guys took, you kept. Uh, well, I returned the gun, so I guess I kept the pe Kevlar, so I put, I'm putting the Kevlar on underneath my clothes. Okay. Anybody else doing any uh, preparations? Uh, no, I'm good. I carry everything with me, so. Mm -hmm. The usual preparations just go along for the ride. Alrighty. 
And so you jump into the truck and you head down you head down the 51 to get into uh, Phoenix itself uh, where it crosses into the 202 you keep riding um, before you start taking the, the side streets and um, Antonio you are following along with a little uh, like tracker thing um, Olivia's got their laptop up and they're watching the GPS of where the rats are congregating um, I'm also going to say for the sake of ease of next week Viper is also in the van um, but I will let them <laughs> respond to Lucian's snake absconding uh, next week uh, so they're just there silently fuming in the back seat um, and as you guys are following along uh, give me another intelligence technology roll, please, Antonio. With a plus two bonus of Olivia helping. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's going... Uh, do you want willpower? Okay. Uh, yes, with a... With Olivia rolling zero successes, I do want a willpower. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it would only be the. It would only be the one. So when I click willpower, do I just type in one? Yes. You click the willpower reroll and then type in one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's it's gonna ask how many you'll reroll because you can only reroll. Uh, the failure, so you wouldn't need to reroll the seven. But that kind of sucks because your one became a one. <laughs> oh jeez, it came up one again on the second time. Yeah, so it just doesn't want you to get that second dice, apparently. Um, it's not It's not so much that you lose track of the rats, um, but it is what you were worried about when you were making the initial setup, that the uh, signal might get degraded uh, going deeper underground or things like that, but you would prepared for it. You had made contingencies uh, for that with the radiation um, and while you're still able to track them it's just that it takes longer now uh, to kind of pinpoint where they're going to be and it's not long before um, you find that in this downtown area um, near near where Phoenix has its convention center and its uh, baseball stadium. There are there's an old train yard and a number of rundown factories that are largely left uh, uninhabited, um, and they just kind of built newer stuff around it while leaving that there. Um, as like an old town or a, a lower class uh, place for the uh, un un unemployed and homeless to congregate in. And the mass of rodents seems to be centralizing in one of these spots. Uh, I'm going to switch over to uh, thermal. And do I see any humanoid figures? I mean, granted, they won't be hot-blooded more Hang than on. likely, but, like, I can find them against the background. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not... S How intense do I want to make this for you guys? You're not seeing any uh, humanoid uh, figures through, like, the windows or on the outer perimeter. Um... It's a train yard, so is there any kind of, like, security office around? Um, there would be a security office uh, right at the entrance. So it would be one of those situations where they have it walled off, uh, the entrance to it, and there would be just, like, a small house where the old security office would be uh, centralized. Okay, um, so if that is the case, uh, I'm going to avoid the cameras of breaking the security office. Okay. Uh, do you require cover or anything? Uh, I just kind of like, say like, 
with my hand, like, just give me a second. Um, and I want to go by myself. Because oh. the less people traipsing across, the better. Yeah, absolutely. So give me a uh, dex plus uh, stealth. That's a four. That's a four. And you are the knight. They do not see you. Uh, you are approaching the security station itself. And so as you are walking up, uh, you see that it is unmanned. There is nobody here keeping an eye on things. No living people, anyways. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to, uh, like, can I just open the door now? Mm hmm. Is there a security system connected first? Uh, give me a what's awareness. One. D but it is a crit. Well, it's bestial. It has to succeed to be a bestial. Yeah. Um, did you want to re-roll that? Because the, the problem is the hunger dice succeeding isn't necessarily a good thing by itself. So. There you go. There we go. Um, so let's see. I'm just pulling up the hunger dice so I can give you the correct answer. And I really wish that they sorted this book out better. I'm guessing it'll be something like that when I heighten my senses to like look for it. I just start like hearing heartbeats and an extra sensory perception and it freaks me out probably. Mm -hmm. That would be my guess on like a sensory bestial critical. Okay, that's examples. Critical win in which one or more tens appears on the hunger dice is a messy critical. The character succeeds as in a regular critical but like an animal would, not being capable of foresight or self-control. The beast scored the critical, perhaps not you. Um, so, basically, you succeed, but in an unforeseen way. And so, Antonio notices the security system, but it's very much after he had stepped into the room. Um, and while he's stealthy um, it's in such a way that there was maybe oh I know I know how to just do it it's not a, a security system in the sense of looking for cameras or a locked door um, but when you open the door and take the first step in you don't notice that there's uh, a small tripwire with a series of cans and uh, metal that jingle and clang. And so you're able to catch it just at the last moment, but it does let off that soft rattle uh, before you're able to get your hand on it and still the noise. Sounds good. Um, is there any kind of security system like hookup that I can connect into here or no? No. It looks okay. like it looks like everything is very uh, primal. It's just basically shit. like a switchboard. Yeah. The um, the old the old security system uh, of the train yard is still there, but it's not active. Because I, okay, I, I, so I, the I get what you're actually seeing anything. Yeah, there the cameras and stuff are not on. The old security system is not working. Yeah, Can whoever I turn it on. Uh, yes, please give me a roll to see if you can turn it on. Uh, it looks. It looks old. It looks uh, like it's been sitting there for at least 10 years. 
Awesome. Uh, so to turn it on, what do you think? Like performance charisma? <laughs> I mean, yeah. If, if, if you can get a critical on that, I will definitely say that you, you powered it up perfectly. Um, give me a... Um, dexterity technology. Find the, find the right sequence of uh, wires and flippies and... That would be a four and uh, one ten. Yep. Uh, so it's not a not a critical on that side. Uh, for the normal ones, you need two of them to make it a critical, but it's still successes. It's four successes at that, uh, with no negative connotations within the uh, be, uh, hunger dice. Uh, so you are able to not just get it working again, but you get it working again quickly. Um, to kind of offset the uh, the the negative aspect of tripping the more uh, rudimentary uh, security system, you're able to get the uh, technological security online and under your control. Um, and so, when you uh, go to flip on the cameras, uh, the last thing we're going to see tonight before we wrap up is uh, a series of old uh, CCTVs. There's like, you know, six of them stacked on top of each other. Uh, two rows of three. They start flicking, ring, flickering on um, a little bit of static. They're in black and white. Um, but it shows uh, like the train yard, uh, one of the um, repair rooms where uh, you would back one of the train cars in and do some work, uh, a couple of storage containers, uh, and then uh, the last one that you look at, it's like the middle of the bottom row. Uh, there is a spot where there is a coffin uh, that is currently open because it's the middle of the night, but there is a uh, bandaged up looking individual that uh, does not have their uh, their legs from the knees or their arms from the elbows, uh, but their face is bandaged up and you can see protruding long bat-like ears. Um, their face is bandaged, there's strands of shaggy uh, hair, and uh, around their neck is a uh, is a cross and they seem to be sitting there around a massed congregation of hundreds of rats so uh antonio immediately yells out like over there now i'm kidding <laughs> over there but yeah Happy uh, everybody that'll <laughs> everyone get in here but that'll be that'll be where we wrap up so we don't uh deprive K of uh, having a chance to unleash a viper army on the, uh, the rat army. Oh my god, it's like a miniature kaiju battle. Yep. Tiny kaiju battle. Tiny kaiju battle. Tiny swarm kaiju versus battle. swarm. Yep. Alright, so to wrap up today, uh, thank you a room full of yes men for following, uh, near dark society for following, and James Cahey for following us on YouTube. So that was... Thank uh, you, everybody. Once again, that was exciting to see. Uh, people are watching us on YouTube. So, hey, welcome. Thank the you. The YouTube interface for streaming is actually really great, too. Yeah, I like I'm, it a lot. I'm really glad that I started uh, putting up the multi-stream uh, so that people can have a chance to see us in other places. And it looks like it's paying off. Um, we will be back... When will we be back? Uh, we have a... A lot of our stuff uh, is kind of on hold right now. I think we're going to be starting a new game on Saturdays if Shane doesn't back out from running uh, Dungeons & Dragons for us. Uh, our Sunday game is on pause now because one of our three players has living situations that are not very good for them right now, uh, which makes them showing up for streams difficult. So I think we're pausing that because it would just be Shay and I at the moment, which sucks because it was a really good uh, Savage Worlds game. 
Um, and then I guess we'll be back here Tuesday uh, for more of this. Um, for me, you can catch me a few places this week. Um, I will be over on, I have to be able to pronounce this correctly, Valdriant's channel uh, playing a converted version of Blades in the Dark um, that is like a fantasy western horror. Um, I play a humanoid, like tall person, uh, fairy, fey folk, um, silver tongue. So basically, basically I'm playing face, uh, but a western face, and they have cool fairy wings, and they nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, they. Um, I'm playing the silver tongue, which is basically just the talker version. Uh, so. They're, they're a fae, and they're a prostitute, and they have a good time. Uh, I also... I we scared off a bear last week, uh, so that was great. Did I, you push the bear off the fence? No, no, I stood on... I stood on, I stood on the muscle's shoulders, and we made ourselves look bigger to scare off the bear. Oh, that's oh my funny. God, it has four arms. What the heck? Yep, and then I got mauled by a coyote, uh, but I definitely... I definitely did get to use my, my charm and charisma to uh, seduce a treasure map off of uh, a group of fanatics so that was fun you um, seduced the cool. treasure map? i seduced the treasure you have map. to promise me that you at least once run out from behind uh like a caddy corner and while the bad guys are trying to attack you say i just run straight past them like we did in the last game because mm -hmm. that was the best I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping we'll try and do <laughs> get help as well please get help and then throw the person at them oh um, it, was so, it was so good we, we ran straight past the people who were there to attack us and then convinced them that there was something chasing us and then took their bikes back to the place that we were going. I still think... Oh, Jesus. This thing just wants to keep flipping on our overlay. Um, I still think the best one is where Face bluffed his way into the lawyer. <laughs> oh, that was good, too, yeah. It's such a good clip. Um, but uh, that's where I'll be Thursday afternoons. Uh, this week's recording of Trudvong is not happening because Necrobiotics Kickstarter is ending on Thursday, so Mitch wants to dedicate all of his time to that. Um, I will have a character within the Necrobiotic book as well because I am throwing Mitch a stupid amount of money to help support uh, that because I believe in the things that Mitch does because he is a great person. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to play it. Looks super cool. So. Yeah, yeah, and we are marked to do that on Thursdays, um, whenever Trudvang finally wraps up. Because, like I was telling uh, in Outro's channel, it's like we're on like the fifth episode of eight, but it's like week ten because people just—it's kind of like Tuesdays where it, it's kind of cursed in just shit keeps happening, and it's a little easier because all we're doing is recording. But Thursday nights is the only night that everyone's available. So when something bad happens, like people have had medical issues or the storms knocking up the whole East Coast last week, uh, we just can't play. So it's like it was only supposed to be for eight weeks, but we're on week 10 and we're only halfway through recording. So, you know, it'll be done when it's done. And uh, we were hoping to get our game going on this channel uh after the kickstarter but you know we wanted to help get it some attention and promote but now i guess that's not going to happen so <laughs> we'll just play it once it's fully funded um i think mitch is still on board for running it for us so that should be fine fridays um i will be over on weave the tale uh because i am going to be the storyteller for cult divinity lost and I wasn't able to uh, wrangle Cadence in, but our good friend Dido is going to suffer through it. And I have a few other people that I haven't met before uh, until the session zero, but it'll be fun to torture and torment them as well. I tried I tried to get Mitch to okay me doing uh, I Am Pilgrim 2, but he, he, oh, never, he never got back to me on it. And they were like, uh, Helmgast wants you to run one of the scenarios instead. So I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll do that instead. This seems fun. Um, I tried to get in. Shay tried to get in when we found out we had an extra spot, but they wrangled somebody who had been on the waiting already. Um, they also didn't do casting calls uh, this season. So 
Uh, it was a little weird uh, the way they set everything up. So I didn't have a chance to grab everyone. You know, they were just like, is there anyone you want in? And Dido was the first person who expressed interest, so I grabbed them. Um, coming soon on Fridays as well, because I'm terrible to myself and I don't enjoy sleep, I will be running Kids on Brooms for Nomenic's channel. Uh, that will be a Roll20 Spotlight game, which I'm excited about. Um, oh, also, Cadence, they gave me uh, a hard copy of... Uh, Cult Divinity Lost, so I have that brick of a book. <laughs> they sent oh, it to me. It's uh, such a pretty thing. It's such a pretty book, and oh. it's it's huge. Turn it to the side, too. It's a big book. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a thick gal. Um, so I will be running uh, two games on Friday, uh, both of the, which are sponsored, and I'm excited for, uh, and I don't enjoy sleeping, apparently. Um, Saturdays, like I said, is up in the air for what we're going to be doing. Sundays is up in the air, but uh, that pretty much covers the whole week. So Mondays, we might have something coming uh, within the next month or two if Shay is able to wrangle everyone in. Uh, we will be doing another Things from the Flood campaign, fingers crossed, with a couple of wonderful artist people uh, such as Destiny, Zanis, and of course Spider Queen Long. Uh, who just finished their own wonderful Kickstarter of... Uh, Change Stars. Change Stars, thank you. I almost said Diesel Shot, and I was like, no, that's not correct. Uh, anyways, it's clear that my brain is not working tonight, so I'm going to wrap it up here before I say anything else goofy. Uh, so thank you all for watching. We will see you next week, and I'm going to find us somebody to raid so that we can share the love. Who is on? Who is on? Atlanta by Night is on, but they are probably finishing up. Vancouver by Night is also on, but they are playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, level one. Vampire peak. play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm yeah, playing. I know. They have a vampire <laughs> channel playing something else. It's so strange. <laughs> uh, we'll go over to our good friends over at Level One Geek. They are playing Pathfinder, so it's not quite the same game, but uh, if you enjoy. Uh, tabletop RPGs, you'll enjoy them because they're good people. So go over, give them some love, tell them we said hi, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.